that game was a lot more exciting than I expected it to be. The kings really like to draw things out and just yeah, get that nail biter, don't they? Thanks, guys, for the early heart attack. It's going to be a shortened lifespan being a Kings fan, but it's always going to be entertaining. So tonight we played the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, first time we've seen Justin Williams back as a Hurricane again. I miss him. I miss my Jay Will so much. He's just such a good guy. So it was lovely to see him back in the building, even if he was, you know, on the wrong side of it again. Um, I didn't expect this game to be quite as competitive as it was, considering that Carolina is um, in the East and we have a stellar record against the East Coast. Really, it's quite phenomenal. Uh, and also because, you know, they're not that great. And we had Quicken Net. And it was Star Wars night, so our Jedi Master, of course, was going to step up to the plate and be Jedi Quick. And he was in the first two periods. The first two periods were pretty great. The first one, not a whole lot happened. There was like maybe one penalty at the end of it um, in which the Kings killed quite easily. In fact, so easily that we had more shorthanded chances, I believe three or four, than they had actual chances on the man advantage so that was lovely to see it's just kind of you know nice period of hockey chances at either end quick was being great their goaltender darling was being pretty good um i follow needs to stop being quite as fan not i follow sorry campaign needs to be stop trying to be so fancy he had this great breakaway almost um, so much speed, absolutely just jettisons into the offensive zone. He's got a couple of players that he dangles the puck around and still keeps control, but then he tries to get too fancy and can't actually get a shot off. So for a guy with that speed, I love seeing that on the Kings. The Kings have definitely been transitioning and much more fast paced, uh, than they have been in the past. And that's something they had said they wanted to work on. And it's, it's working for them, except that Kempe, when you get down there, you need to know what to do with it. You, you got to be able to finish. So, eh, first period kind of, you know, blah, and second period we get into it, and they're out shooting us by quite a bad margin, doubling us almost. I think it was uh, 7 to 15, so more than doubling at that point. Uh, just absolutely racking up the shots. They were, were getting to hit pretty heavy. We definitely hit back McDermott. I just love seeing him in the lineup. He retaliated uh, in a, you know, clean, safe, legal way. Uh, but definitely smashed a few guys. So the, fir the first was Jake Muzzin. Uh, got a puck to the face and kind of came off like checking his beard. And like, oh, is there blood in here? I don't know. And that didn't look good. And then a really bad... Uh, center ice hit onto Foley leaves him down and we're wondering if it's out for the count because he's not getting up and plays going on around him and he's kind of struggling to get up he does and instead of going back to the bench he sees that he can be open in the offensive zone and Kopitar is there uh, he was on the line tonight with with Kopi and uh, Pearson so they, they swapped up a little bit Shore was on the top line with Ayafalo and uh, Brown so that was interesting he has been playing well lately and, and so probably deserves to go up and see what he can do there but anyway uh, Kopi and Toffoli had some beautiful chemistry and Toffoli, instead of, you know, whining to the ref about such a big hit or, or trying to retaliate back with the guys, he immediately gets into an open slot, gets the feed from Kopitar, and scores a goal instead. So much better revenge, I think, than anything else he could have done. So beautiful. The whole crowd just went wild. It was great. Instead of the whole moment just being, oh my gosh, it really just rejuvenized everything and the Kings were back on track and then they got a second goal also from Kopitar and Toffoli and things were just looking great. So this was Kopitar's goal. He uh, deflected in the Toffoli shot and suddenly the Kings are 2 nothing. All of our third period magic was happening in the second period and that's usually when the Kings tend to lose their game a little bit so that they need to be the comeback kings in the second and it wasn't happening and we were all really excited and then we got to the third period and it seems like we had used up all of our third period magic in the second period uh jonathan's jedi moves that he showed off so so well in the second to keep the kings at two to nothing 
going into the third, uh, that that really boosted the team too. And and you know then the, then the third happened. So we took a couple of penalties that I felt like we didn't need to take. Uh, just kind of killed our momentum a little bit and gave it back to the Hurricanes. Um, their power play wasn't great until, you know, it was. Uh, Mitchell, I believe, was in the box, and we have maybe seven minutes left to go, and things are kind of coasting a little bit. I think that was the problem. Usually in the third period, the Kings know that they have to do or die and come back and make it fantastic, and they were sitting on a 2 nothing lead against a team that wasn't really showing them... I mean, yeah, Quick did a couple of Jedi things, but the... There wasn't a lot of chances they were getting. They weren't showing them great opposition there. So they just, the Kings just kind of coasted. And it cost them because the first power play goal put us two to one. And they started to search back a little bit. And I'm thinking, guys, you know, a one goal lead is not very safe considering two days ago you gave up a lead three to two with 8.5 seconds to go. So maybe you don't do that again. Yeah, with about three minutes left, we take another penalty, delayed penalty, and just can't get control of the puck. Like, can't touch it up in order to get the penalty called and, and reset and everything. Good 40 seconds of the Hurricanes totally dominating the puck anywhere and everywhere in their offensive zone. And sure enough, puck gets by, and there's two minutes, 20 -ish seconds left in the period and at this point I'm just worried we're not even going to make it to overtime because they had definitely lost whatever magic they had in the second period. The force had gone over to the dark side or something I've actually have never seen Star Wars so I'm probably not going to be great with the references tonight. Anyway, except for Jedi Quick because he is he is quick. And then Quick got called upon in overtime to be even more of a Jedi Master than he was before because for literally two minutes and almost 50 seconds, we did not get a shift change. So it was the long shift. So we were uh, in, in the defensive zone for at least two and a half minutes to two minutes. And I looked at two minutes, 30 seconds, and we were still there a good 20 seconds after that. Uh, so they could keep like shifting their guys out and coming back in because they had control of the puck and it was their short shift. Uh, and we just, we were dead tired on the ice. Quickie couldn't seem to cover. He made the stops he needed to, but couldn't get the play stopped. Stafoli, Kopitar, and Drew out there. So yeah, those are the three guys you're, you're wanting out there. But good lord, uh, for those of you who are not quite as uh, up, up on hockey and watching this anyway, um, a normal shift is 30 to 45 seconds. So this is three, six, nine, that's six or so shifts in a row with absolutely no break. They were dead tired. They were trying to kind of chase the puck around and it was, it was just bad. It, it, I have no idea how we managed to make it out of their life, but finally one of the kings got control of the puck and managed to get it out. Uh, and, and down the other end, well, not even that, they managed to get it out and to, uh, another player. <laughs> like, they, they got enough control of it that one could go onto the bench and, and then they, they got the change they needed, finally. Yeah, but they still couldn't really do anything with it. They just managed to make the shift change and they were just so excited that they could do that almost. I have no idea. They were so gassed by the end of that. Um... They finally, finally did actually get good possession of it. Um, as the seconds were dwindling down, maybe like 30 seconds left, and thinking, oh, God, I don't want to go to a shootout. Please, just don't go to a shootout. Oh, who's going to be there for you? Tanner Pearson. Tanner Pearson, who gets his own rebound. He is not content to just let one, one go. He gets the second one. It goes past Darling, and oh, thank God. <gasps> Just the whole, the last five minutes of the third period were like watching through your fingers kind of, kind of game. And then for the whole of the overtime, we're just like, oh, like, oh, cover it. Oh, my, just, no, it's over there. Oh, my God. Why are you still on the ice? So, yeah, much more exciting than it perhaps needed to be. Thanks, guys. I do enjoy my early heart attacks. But, again, I'll take the two points. Any way we can get them. <laughs>
And here's hoping that on our road trip we don't have quite as many heart attacks. <laughs> Good luck out there, guys.